Hi everyone, Caitlin here from the Galloway Farm. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to make and pair for a sourdough starter using cups instead of grams. So, sourdough starter. When I first heard of sourdough starter, I was completely turned off. The thought of something having to sit on your counter, you feed it and it grows, just did not appeal to me at all. Then I started hearing more and more about sourdough and the health benefits that come from it. Essentially, sourdough starter is a capture of wild yeast from your environment. That yeast breaks down the proteins in the flour and it breaks it into amino acids. That makes it so much easier for your gut to digest and it makes it easier for you to absorb the nutrients. The yeast feeds off of the flour, the sugar in the flour, and then it exhales carbon dioxide. Those are the bubbles that you start to see in the starter. Now, sourdough starter, there's a few different things you need to keep in mind if you're going to start one yourself. You want to use unbleached flour because bleached flour will kill off that yeast, unfortunately. You also want to make sure if you're using tap water that you have let the chlorine evaporate from it before you use it. You can do this by setting it in a cup or a jar or a bowl on your counter, giving it about 12 to 24 hours before you use it, and all the chlorine will be evaporated from that water. You can also just use bottled water if that's what you prefer. Now, when you start your starter, you may start to see some gray liquid form on the top. That's called hooch. That is completely normal. That just means that your starter is hungry and needs to be fed. So you can either drain that off when you feed it, or you can just mix it back in. You're also gonna start to smell over the next few days after you start your starter, a tangy, um, sour smell. That just means it's fermenting, your yeast are growing. It's a good thing. Now, if you start to smell a bad sour smell, like dirty socks or vomit, then you want to probably throw away your starter, reassess the situation, and start over. So when I started researching sourdough starter and how to make it, how to use it, everything I saw was measured in grams. And then it was so exact. They made it seem like if you didn't measure in grams, if you were off by one gram, your starter was never going to grow. It wasn't going to double in size. You couldn't make bread from it. So I was a little discouraged from that. I kept researching, trying to find a recipe to use that used cups. I finally found one and I tweaked it a little bit to meet my needs. So I'm going to share all that with you today. Now, whenever you have your sourdough starter going, you're gonna to want to keep it in a warm place. I keep mine on the counter beside our stove since we use our stove and our oven so much. The warmth helps the yeast to grow. You do want to, however, keep it out of direct sunlight because the light can kill off the yeast. So I just keep our little recipe book holder in front of the starter. Once your starter is active, if you're not making bread with it that often, you can keep it in the refrigerator as well. To do this, you would discard half of the starter, feed it as normal, and then stick it in the refrigerator. Whenever you know you're gonna use it in the next couple of days, bring it out two days in advance, discard half, feed it, keep it in a warm location, and keep doing that every day until it's ready to use. Um, if you're keeping it in the refrigerator for long periods of time, you will want to bring it out about once a week and feed it. You don't have to bring it out ahead of time if this is the case. Let's say I'm keeping it in the refrigerator and I want to feed it once a week. I would say on Sunday would be my day to feed it. I would bring it out, discard half, feed it, put it back in the fridge. So you don't have to let it sit out in that scenario. Now to get started on day one, you're going to have a jar. I like to use a mason jar because it makes it easier to measure your starter. And you're gonna want a lid. Um, you can use a mason jar lid, a paper towel, kitchen towel, and a rubber band just to wrap it around. But you wanna make sure your lid is loosely on your jar. If your yeast is growing like it should be and it gets a little bit too big for your jar, if you have an airtight seal on the jar, the yeast will actually break the jar. Um, so you want to just make sure it's loosely sitting on top. So we're going to, on day one, add half a cup of flour and a fourth a cup of water. Mix that until all the flour is incorporated, until you have a thick paste-like consistency. You want it to look like pancake batter. 
Then you're going to just set that jar aside and then after 24 hours on day two, you're going to feed it again half a cup of flour and a fourth a cup of water. Set it aside, come back to it 24 hours later on day three and then you're going to actually start discarding half of your starter. If you keep feeding your starter and you never take out half, you're gonna have to gradually increase the flour and water you're feeding it. That is gonna run you a fortune on your flour bill. You're gonna have to start feeding it more and more every single day and your flour will end up, or your starter will end up growing so much that it's gonna take over your home basically. So you wanna just keep a small amount of starter on hand at all times. You don't need much to make bread with anyways, so keeping a small amount is the best option. So when it comes to discard, you can actually keep that discard to use for later recipes. I've used it for brownies, cinnamon rolls, pancakes, cornbread, lots of different things. So to do that, you're gonna have your own designated discard jar. Put your discard in that jar, stick it in the fridge, and just keep adding the same discard to that jar every day. Now you do want to use up that discard within 14 days or two weeks before it starts to go on the bad side. So after day three, you're just gonna start doing the same thing over and over and over. You're going to discard half, feed half a cup of flour, feed a fourth a cup of water, mix and set aside. You should start seeing bubbles in your starter and it should start to double in size. That should happen at least 14 days after you start your starter. That's about how long it took me. I actually almost threw away my starter because I was pretty discouraged. I was like, it's not really growing. I don't see it doing much. Jared was like, well, just keep feeding it and see the very next day it doubled in size. So just get a time, be persistent, if after two weeks it's still not doubling in size or you're not seeing much activity, then I would consider throwing it away and starting over. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into how I feed my starter now that it's active. So I've got my starter here. I'll go ahead and show you how it's bubbly and active. And here I have my starter discard jar. So I'm going to go ahead and remove half of my starter and put it with my discard. This part may get a little bit messy, that's okay. <laughs> All right, so I took out about half of the starter. I'm gonna go ahead and clean this jar up and put it in the fridge. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and add my flour. I like to use the same measuring cup for my flour and my water, so I'm just using a fourth a cup. So I'm going to put two of these full of flour in my starter. Then I'm going to add a fourth a cup of water. Okay, now we can stir. Just until all the flour is incorporated. Again, you want it to be a thick Tastes like consistency, almost like pancake batter. If you need to add a splash more of water, if it's too thick, you can. If you need to add a sprinkle more flour, if it's too thin, you can. Just feel it out and see what works best for you.
right, so I'm pretty happy with that consistency. All my flour has been incorporated. All right, so I'm just gonna cover this loosely and put it back in its spot on the counter beside the stove. And I'll feed it again 24 hours later. I hope you guys enjoyed this video of sourdough starter care. If you guys decide to start your own starter, please drop a comment down below and let me know how it goes. And if you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe so you never miss what's going on around here at the farm. Thanks guys.